Well, we're witnessing uh, very significant changes in the geopolitical environment. When we think today uh, about the environment globally, we, uh, we see the discussion is focused on the United States, which has been very focused on its own econo domestic economic issues, is largely withdrawing from the foreign policy environment. We could just read the news these days. But at the same time, it's very conscious of the fact that it's in a G2 environment, and it's mu much of its foreign policy and future is focused on a competition with China, we see this on the security environment, on cyber security, on uh, issues in South China Sea, in, in Northeast Asia, and then thinking a bit more globally. We see it most clearly also in, a, in an American conception of using trade in this uh, uh, context of creating blocks of free trade uh, where the global GDP is concentrated in Asia and in Europe and trying to create, if you would, a global environment for competition with China's economic interests. But the big idea is that the real decider here is energy, both in terms of foreign policy making and in the context of foreign policy. And the big idea is that uh, energy actually uh, not only will set the context for American-Chinese global rivalry for how G2 will work, but actually will bring everything back to the Middle East. Now, the United States has, since World War II, been a, a viewed energy as critical to its uh, 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 geostrategy, to the way it sees the world. Its conception today is very different. That its conception is that actually it's now in, free of having to think about energy in terms of global geostrategy. There are two forces here at work in, in the thinking. One is American independence from energy and the other one is the Chinese dependence on energy. And the, although we're more focused on what American independence means, the other side of the picture is equally important. In American thinking, shale gas and tide oil are very important. Uh, we don't know how much of this production is real, but the most important thing is at this stage, the psycho psychological part matters more, which is Americans believe that shale gas will make them more competitive, will bring down the cost of manufacturing, it will also enable them to forget about the Middle East and to focus on Asia. So the big thing for Americans is that energy independence means they can go to the Asia Pacific. For the Chinese and other Asian countries, it's the reverse. In other words, their energy demand is growing and is likely to grow further, and that brings them in the opposite direction. Energy is not an Asia Pacific issue. Energy is a Middle East, Africa, Central Asia issue. And uh, it's not China alone, it's also Korea, Japan, India. And the more these countries grow, the more they're going to all be competing for energy, and all of them are going to bring their competition to the Middle East. The fact that the United States thinks it's going to not need Middle East oil has led Middle Eastern countries to pivot to Asia as well. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, they all are looking for big deals, oil and gas deals, with Asia. Qatar is not selling gas or doesn't see selling gas at $16 a BTU in the West. It's looking to sell that gas uh, in, in, in Asia. And uh, you could see the volume of trade, uh, volume of uh, sale of gas, uh, gas and oil is going up. There are opportunities for investments up market as well as in sources. Middle East also matters in terms of transportation of energy from West to East from Iraq, northern Iraq, through energy hubs like Turkey, through Iran, eastward, and from north to south, from Central Asia into the Persian Gulf, and then eastward. And also the Middle East matters because it allows China to get away from the blockages and, and bottlenecks and security threats of the Indian Ocean, from the Malacca Straits problem. So in, in many ways it looks at this as a critical issue. But the big problem for, for the Middle East for China is the same problem that the United States has, which is Middle East is divided politically along ideological lines, along political lines, and the promise is ultimately uh, uh, clouded by the reality of managing this. Now, there are different scenarios that might happen. One is that uh, the United States, unlike the fact that it thinks it's going to be independent of the Middle East, is going to be sucked in by these problems as we're seeing in the headlines today to come back to the region and whether the United States and China will be both in the Middle East, the manner in which they are both in, Central, in, in Southeast Asia, or whether one is going to leave and leave the Middle East to the other one.
But another big idea is that the conception of the Middle East is very different in American thinking than in the Chinese thinking, or would be. For Americans, it's about MENA, Middle East, North Africa. For China, it would be MECA, Middle East, Central Asia. And that boundary line would have a big impact on the Middle East itself. Thank you.